we are now in conversation with Manish Tandon. He's the MD and CEO of Zensar Technologies. Uh, Manish, good morning and thank you so much for joining in. Let me start by asking you first about the implications of the rate cuts in the US and the business environment. Does this mean a change in sentiment or will there be, you know, perhaps will, will there be a little bit of a, a lag effect that will come assuming, of course, in the first place, that there will be rate cuts. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, uh, the dynamics with the Federal Reserve rate cuts. Uh, because he, it, for the last two years, uh, people have been saying rate cut, rate cut, rate cut. There has been no rate cut and the market has gone up. Okay. Now, suddenly, that uh, Federal Reserve has indicated that uh, you know, that there could be a rate cut as early as September. Um, the market is now thinking that, okay, why is the Federal Reserve cutting the rate? Because that means that the economy is maybe not going to do too well. And that is why they are cutting the rates. So suddenly, uh, now that there is some indication that rate cuts will actually happen, uh, the focus has shifted to the economy that... <laughs> All right, um, uh, Federal Reserve is cutting rates because maybe it feels that the econo economy is not going to do well, do too well. Mm. And again, the uh, R word, dreaded R word has started, recession word has started uh, happening. So it's a, um, it's a, a good position for the Federal Reserve to be in uh, because uh, most, most policies have this yin and yang and I think uh, their objective of trying to make a soft landing out of it uh, seems to be getting closer uh, than what we had seen in the past. Uh, materially, I don't think uh, much changing till the US elections are over and the new president is sworn in. Right, Manish, in the past, you also mentioned that clients in the US are holding on to opening their wallets in a big way for the US general elections. Now, uh, to pass to this question, First, will the out outcome of the upcoming election have a bearing on business environment? And uh, two, does it really matter if it is in fact Trump or Kamala Harris who comes into play? Is there a difference in terms of how they actually look at, uh, well, you know, perhaps a business uh, you know, environment going forward? See, I, uh, my point of view is, uh, frankly, that uh, I'm just looking at it from a Federal Reserve perspective rather than from a political perspective. And uh, if you see uh, then the pressure on the uh, Federal Reserve from the incumbent or the future president uh, at this stage is not there. So pretty much Federal Reserve can do what they want to do and is good for the economy. So that is uh, how I am uh, looking at it. But it will depend uh, more than the political dispensation. I think it will depend on what kind of deficits, fiscal deficits, et cetera, will happen because, uh, you know, interest rates are just one part of the equation. The second part of the equation is the uh, other deficits and the money supply uh, and, uh, and Federal Reserve balance sheet. And I think uh, 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 while the monetary policy uh, is one side of the equation. The other side uh, of uh, the equation is fiscal policy. And uh, the political uh, dispensation will depend, the, de will decide the fiscal policy going forward. And if the fiscal policy is too lax, then the monetary policy has to be tightened and vice versa. Right, Manish, you know, uh, given the current environment, we also wanted to understand the difference in the client profile. So. How are the needs of a one to five million dollar client different from those of ten to twenty million dollar clients? And uh, you know, is there a, a, a huge difference with respect to their own requirements, the different challenges and the problems that they need to solve going forward? Oh, that's a great uh, that's a great question. Actually, um, no one has asked me this question before, uh, but um, again. Uh, uh, I would say that um, ultimately uh, the people who are spending 10 to 20 million uh, at one point in time at today were in one point of time spending 1 to 5 million. <laughs> so it's a, 
it's a growth uh, growth trajectory some people will go from uh, 1 to 5 uh, down to 0 and there will be some people who will scale up to 10 20 50 100 million depending on how the uh, business does uh, good news is that if the interest rates really come down then uh, interest rates uh, really impact the smaller players who are dependent on credit much more uh, than the larger players. So, and as you perhaps, if you're following the US market, you will see that uh, there is a shift happening from uh, the Magnificent Seven to a much more broad based, small and, uh, smaller and mid cap stocks uh, also. So, that is, that is the difference. Ultimately, uh, you use technology to drive scale. Uh, if you if you are a small if you are a smaller company the need for technology is limited if you're a larger company just to manage the scale of operations you need much more technology and of course uh, let's also talk about gen ai then uh, in terms of uh, areas of opportunities and area of cautions uh, where is zensar seeing their well responsibilities and what are the role that uh, zensar is looking to play here yeah, I mean, uh, look, uh, generative AI is another tool. It is not, it is not, you know, a cure all uh, for everyone. Uh, that is the first important thing to realize. Second thing to realize is artificial intelligence is really artificial. <laughs> so there is a uh, error rate associated with each of these responses. All right. And my view is uh, that uh, when you are designing these applications, you need to take this these error rates into cognizance and then design the use case. Also, these are fairly costly. Uh, while it might the answer might appear very quickly, there are very costly computations going on in the background. So that cost benefit analysis also needs to be uh, married uh, to uh, this, uh, this overall equation. So uh, while I'm very excited about the technology and we are doing some great stuff with that technology, uh, I just uh, want to caution my clients that you know, let's not, you know, jump headlong into it and invest a lot of money uh, without uh, seeing some tangible uh, economic benefits out of it. Right, Manish, you guys have also put in a lot of investments in telecommunications vertical. And uh, the question really is that, how have things changed over the past couple of years? And what are the newer requirements uh, as far as clients are concerned as, as compared to perhaps a couple of years ago, what's the impact of 5G as well? So I think, uh, um, see, change is, change is very, change is constant. Uh, and, you know, from, uh, especially in the telecom sector, from the good old, uh, plain old telephone lines to mobile and to internet and, and so on, we've seen dramatic changes and that uh, the cycle continues. Um, the uh, Moore's law is catching up, so the technology is becoming cheaper, uh, and uh, reach is increasing. The use of technology is increasing, so that is causing a lot of a uh, lot of demand, but and at a lower price point. So, what is happening in the uh, communication sector uh, really is that uh, you have to constantly innovate. Uh, and you people are innovating mainly at the convergence of various media uh, types. So voice is one media, internet is another media, uh, films, communications, uh, video games, all this are uh, another media. So because of that conver convergence, this, uh, the, the, the turmoil in the sector uh, continues to be uh, continues to be there. Uh, also, uh, the much hyped 5G uh, did not yield as much benefits 
commercially uh, to the carriers as they thought it would, in my opinion. And that also has meant that uh, some belt tightening is happening. And uh, finally, Manish, uh, you know, your plans on the newest vertical which was listed in the income statement just last year, healthcare. What are your plans here and how are you expecting this particular segment to come through? Uh, I am very excited about uh, the healthcare vertical uh, overall. Uh, as you know, uh, I have cut my teeth in this vertical a few years back, uh, and it's a vertical where you are actually contributing directly to uh, you are making an impact on people's lives directly. Um, so uh, very excited about it. We have a, a very good uh, game plan in place. It's a very vast vertical uh, overall. So broadly, you can divide it into payer, um, payer provider, pharma, med devices, and so on. Uh, we have chosen a segment which is uh, more closer to pharma and med devices. We have chosen a sub, -sub segment of of that, uh, primarily commercial, uh, and uh, we want to create that beachhead there and then expand from there. And in line with that, we have also acquired Ridgeview Life Sciences, uh, which uh, specializes in this, uh, this sector. Uh, we are very excited about uh, welcoming them to the Zensar family. And uh, uh, I have great hopes from this sector. Manish Tannan, we leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your views on how Zensar can, in fact, play that role in the Indian IT sector and take it forward.